In this video, we are going to use multiple 3D scanners on the same object. Now, why would you use different 3D scanners on the same vehicle? Well, theoretically, you might be able to 3D scan this vehicle inside and out with one 3D scanner, but many of our customers today have purchased multiple 3D scanners for specific scanning tasks. So in this video, we will demonstrate how to decide what scanner would work best on different parts of this SUV. In addition, we will demonstrate how to merge all of the 3D scan data into one file for downstream applications. So let's get started with the outside of the vehicle. The best choice here is going to be the Metroscan 3D scanner. For starters, it offers 30 laser lines and uses either no targets in static mode or just a handful of targets in dynamic mode, as you see here. Now, if you want to learn more about any of these 3D scanners, we have in-depth 20 to 30 minute videos on our YouTube channel for all of these 3D scanners. I'll put a link below in the description if you want to check out those videos. As you can see, the Metroscan is not only extremely fast, but we can also move the C-Track camera system around and keep scanning. Also, if there's any movement of the vehicle while scanning, it doesn't affect the accuracy or data quality when in the dynamic mode. So in less than an hour, we can 3D scan the entire outside of this large SUV with the Metroscan. You will notice we are 3D scanning some of the interior of the vehicle with the Metroscan as well. Now the Metroscan is going to be limited in how much it can 3D scan on the inside of the vehicle because of the C-Track camera system. But you will see how this data will help us with aligning other 3D scan data later. We have removed one wheel from the vehicle to 3D scan as much of the suspension system as possible. This is another advantage of the dynamic referencing system is moving the vehicle has no bearing on accuracy or data quality. We will get as much of the data as possible, but there are some line of sight issues trying to get all the key geometry in this area. Next, we are going to use the Handy Probe optical probing system to probe the geometry of the steering and suspension system. The advantage of the Handy Probe is you can use probe tip extensions of any length and angle to get into areas not possible with any 3D scanner. Probing can be used to generate planes, lines, points, circles, cylinders, scribe lines, and much more. You will notice that the probe data is aligned perfectly with the 3D scan data, and you can switch back and forth between 3D scanning and probing. Our next task is to 3D scan the engine bay. And for this, we will use the HandyScan Black Elite. This scanner is great because of its small size, we can fit the scanner down into tight places. In addition, the engine bay has some challenging surface types, such as chrome, dark, and shiny, which the HandyScan's blue laser technology will do a great job collecting the data. Now this 3D scanner requires positioning targets about every four inches, but using our speed target tape makes this extremely fast and easy. Speed target tape is clear, thin, but strong tape you place on any surface. The 3D scanner will recognize the targets, but scan through the tape. This saves a ton of time placing and removing the hundreds of targets needed for this engine bay. Our last step is to 3D scan the interior. And for this, we will use the GoScan Spark. What's great about the GoScan Spark is it has a very large scan area of 15 by 15 inches and doesn't require positioning targets to 3D scan. It will take advantage of targets and use them to track, but it also uses the geometry to properly align the data as you 3D scan. This will make quick work of the interior as you see here. All right, with all of our 3D scanning done, how do we put the data all together? Well, let's start and take a look at this here. This is the main body that we scanned with the Metroscan, and you can see it here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide the door, 
And how I did that is I just went in. Now I'm using GeoMagic Design X, but you could use the VX model software. You could use any reverse engineering software to do this kind of work. And I just traced around the door opening and separated it into its own polygon file. Okay, so we can hide that. So here is everything we got with the metric scan. And we purposely opened the door and scanned a little bit of the interior. And why is that important? Well, let's bring in the go scan data. Okay, well, you can see it's not lined up because every time you start scanning, unless you predefine a coordinate system, it's just going to be in an arbitrary coordinate system. So the interior scan data is out here. And we need to align it with the metric scan data. So we're going to come under here and we're going to say align between scan data. And we're going to do it based on pick point. Our reference will be the main body. And then our moving part will be the go scan interior. And what we're going to do is just get, get them in similar views. And you can see I scanned just enough of the interior here to give us something to align to. So we'll just pick three points fairly uh, close um, uh, to each other when, when I pick in the first view. And then I'll pick here, here, and here. They don't have to be perfect, but just close enough that you'll see they're roughly aligned right now. And then we'll hit OK. And what this is going to do is take those three initial points and use it as a start. And it's going to fine tune and align the scan data so that it lines up perfectly. OK, so if we hit OK and exit out, you can see now that that data is perfectly aligned. OK, we get a little bit of bleed through, uh, which is good. It shows me they're lined up really well. So you can see what we've done. We took that go scan data from the interior, which, you know, that scanner works great to get into tight places that the metro scan just wouldn't get. And then now we have the body uh, with the metro scan. Now let's go ahead and also turn off the hood because we did the same thing with the handy scan data and the engine area. OK, so we scanned a little bit of overlap between the two and then that allowed us to line the two data sets up and we separated the hood from the main body same way, just tracing around and separating that data. So there's the hood and the door. Now, let's go ahead and hide our tire, because if you remember, we had taken that tire off of the car and scanned uh, the suspension without it. And let's turn on our uh, uh, handy probe data, okay, that you see here, okay? So if you look closely, now this data will automatic be, automatically be aligned because we were switching back and forth with the metro scan to the handy probe. And as long as we still had that same dynamic referencing, um, those two will be lined up. But you can see the circles we define, the planes that we defined. Let's just hide the mesh for a minute. You can see all that data is there. And this is, instead of being a mesh, these are actual surfaces. And these are sketches. So the advantage of this is then you can get a center point and an axis, a very you know uh, precise location on some of those key, especially these back in here. We just couldn't uh, reach those very well with the metro scan, so we can go in with that probe and that long extension and pick those points we need. Okay, so that just kind of shows you how you can use different scanners on the same object. Uh, to do a really good job and really picking the right scanner for the job with the metro scan being really fast on the you know getting the the exterior the uh, ghost scan spark did great on the interior because we didn't have to target it and for the uh, handy scan we just put the uh, speed target across the engine and that allowed us to get down inside and get those areas we needed and then finally the handy probe allowed us to reach in and probe some points that the scanner just couldn't see. So we used four different technologies to get uh, a really nice model here of this uh, large SUV.